Hi, and welcome to 3dmotive.com. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and I'm a senior character artist. In this quick little tips and tricks tutorial, we're going to take a look at Transpose Master. Transpose Master is a really great suite of little tools built within ZBrush that allow you to pose your model. Now, usually most models like this are in a static pose. Sometimes it's called the T-pose, although T-pose is usually with the arms straight out. Uh, this, they actually angled down. This is what they were going to be used for in the game. That's the parameters that were needed. So it's, th But this is technically the T-pose for this character. So uh, it's, it's kind of high poly. It's about 6.5 million polygons. Um, but we need to be able to pose it. We need to make it look like it. maybe it's an action shot or something like that. So what we need to do first is go to our Z plugin. We'll just click on this little icon here. That docks it over to this side. If we go to our transpose master, okay, we have T-pose and T-pose to sub. What this is saying is, is when we click this, what ZBrush does is it creates a proxy model of our model, a low resolution version. It basically is going to drop all, all the sub tools down to low subdivision and then allow us to pose that model then when we're done with it, we can click this button to trans the, the transpose back to our subtools, and it will go back into our uh, subtool palette and reposition all the subtools, even at the high resolution, into the poses that we create in this particular uh, for this particular model. So if we do an action pose, it'll all of a sudden retain that action pose for this particular character. Now there are some times when when you're working with this, there are sometimes a little few, a few fixes you end up having to do because again, uh, when it drops it down to the lowest uh, polycon count, uh, some of the deformations maybe aren't as smooth, and sometimes sometimes ZBrush can you know, it'll it'll squink them out a little bit. It'll, it, you have to do little fixes here and there, but it doesn't often happen. Usually, it works pretty pretty nicely. So let's go ahead and do a, a quick jump into it. So I'm going to go ahead and click the T-Pose Mesh. So as you can see, it's dropping it down to its lowest poly uh, versions. And now it says the T-Pose Mesh is complete. Okay, So that means this model is now our lowest resolution model. You can see because all of our paint information is really crap now because you know, it's it's not enough polygons to support all the different uh, work we put into it, but it gives you an idea of what you're dealing with, and that's fine. Okay. So the first things we're going to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and and mask this arm. I'm just holding down my control key and I'm dragging a rectangle in the background. Now I did actually have a section that was masked on the original model, so I'm going to go ahead and invert this mask. I'm going to hold down my control key and just dot in the background, just click in the background. Okay, see I can invert it. I'm going to go ahead and mask that off. Okay, so not just this one arm is highlighted. Now we want to make sure when we're working with the T-pose, let me go ahead and invert this mask. If we're inverting this mask, then we're protecting this arm. We're not doing anything to the arm. We need to make sure that we invert that mask so that the rest of it is and the rest of the model is protected. It's fixed. Nothing's going to happen to it. And you'll see what I mean by that in a second because we need to pose this arm. We also don't want to necessarily have such a strong edge here. So I'm going to go ahead and blur the mask. I'm going to hold down my control key and just click on the mask. So you can see that just blurred it very nicely. Okay. All right. Now to actually use the transpose master, I click on one of these. This is move, scale, and rotate. So in this case, I'll go for rotating. This starts off with what's called an action line. This is the ZBrush action line. This is our origin. This is our end point. Okay. So where's our origin for this? Well, obviously, the joint up here for his arm would be somewhere about there. So I'm just going to click, and I'm going to drag down to the length of the hand. Okay. And I'll let go. There's our action line. It's saying this arm is what's going to be moved. This is the one. This is what we're dealing with, and this is the pivot point we're looking at. If I rotate the model, you can see it's actually a little bit forward from what we need. But if we're only going to angle the the arm from the front, it's no big deal. But in this case, we might want to angle the arm in the back. So what we can do is, if 
as you can see, as I move my mouse or my cursor over the outer ring, it highlights. That's saying, oh, do you want to move me? Well, in this case, yeah, I do. I'm going to click, left click and drag, and I'm going to move it more towards the joint where it should be. Okay. And same with down here. See, it just highlights. I want to move that and I'm angle it a little bit more towards the the end of the middle finger or somewhere there about, or between the middle finger and the third finger. All right. So let's go ahead and we're in rotate. To make it actually work, you see how each, we have an inner ring and you have an, uh, an inner ring here and an outer ring. You see the outer ring is yellow and it highlights. When I move my cursor in, all of a sudden a, a red circle appears. That's saying, okay, this is where you need to move from. This is the action where it's going to be. So if I merely click and drag that, I can now move his arm up and down. You see that? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and grab this key or this uh, origin point. I'm going to actually move it down just a little bit. And now I'm going to go back to this center point and move it. There we go. Now it actually, oops, it actually inverted the, the arm area a little bit up in this section. So I'm what I might want to look at doing is do a control Z and I'll go back into my draw and I'm just going to uh, blur that mask one more time. I'm going to hold my control key and click on the mask. That blurs a little bit more. If I go back to my rotate, nothing's changed, but now I can rotate this model and it, it doesn't collapse it quite as badly, which is what I want. All right. I'm going to go ahead and go back into my draw. I'm going to clear my mask, just hold down my control key and clear in the background. And now I'm just going to mask the forearm. I'm going to blur that mask a couple times and I'm going to invert. Okay. I'm going to go back to our rotate. In this case, you know, I don't want to rotate this arm from the center point. You know, I need to, I need to make sure it's going to uh, rotate from the elbow. So I can either move this over and I can just move it in space. You can see I can just move it over like that. Okay. Or I can just drag it over here for now and I can start a brand new action line. I can just click and drag. Okay. So that's from, you can see it's from my elbow. I can now grab this and angle it more towards the hand. And I can angle this down a little bit more. There we go. All right. So now what I can do is for the rotate, I can now rotate his arm like this. Okay, and I might even want to rotate it up a little bit. Now, if I grab this this middle key, I can, I'm actually pivoting it. You see that? So I can actually pivot it around. All right. I can go ahead and clear my mask. Let's go ahead and get back into our draw. I'm going to grab his whole upper body, and I'm going to blur it a couple times. I'm going to invert. Again, this is just to show you how this works. Let's go ahead for another rotate. I'm going to grab the center point just from here, and I'm going to hold my shift key down, and that allows me to drag a straight line. Okay, I haven't let go of my mouse yet, but I can get right to the top of his head and then let it go. When you hold down your shift, it gives you a nice straight line. Now, the really good thing about this is the center point needs to be moved back a little bit, so I'm just going to go ahead and grab this little origin ring and pull it in a little bit. Okay, and now I can go for rotate. I'm going to rotate him forward. And let's go ahead and rotate him. Yeah, just bending him out. Okay. Something simple, just so you guys can see it. All right. Clear my mask. I'm going to say, you know what? I, I think that's going to be done. Let's go ahead and do our T pose to sub. Okay. And as you can see, it's going to go through the model. There you go. And there you go. It took 10 seconds. Now you can see, like I said, there is a little tweaking I need to do. I need to fix that a little bit. If I'd been a little cleaner with how I was working it, it would have been fine to begin with. But as you can see, it turned out beautifully, except for that one little thing. And of course, that was my error. I should have cleaned my, my uh, mask up a little bit better. But as you can see, it very quickly delivers the goods 
uh, I don't know any program that does it that easily, that quickly. And you can now save this mesh out. If you're going for a 3D print, you can create a basketball pose of him throwing the ball or whatever, and it'd be perfect. You know, if if you set up your masking correctly and you you do the right rotations and everything else, it'd look awesome. But that's really quickly uh, how how you do it. It's a very quick introduction to Transpose Master, but it's it's really a lot of fun, and and hopefully you'll enjoy working with it as well. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and this has been 3DMotive.com. I hope you enjoyed it.